please welcome on stage your host, Sasha Stotz. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, NeosCon. Okay, this wasn't what I was hoping for. Let's try this again. Good morning, NeosCon. Yeah, now we're talking. My name is Sascha. <clears throat> I'm an agile coach with Tech Division, a company in Munich in Rosenheim. But not today. Today and tomorrow, I'm, I have the honor of being your host for this conference. And it's a conference which is sold out. Yeah, congratulations. <laughs> we have over 200 attendees from virtually all over the globe. And it's the largest conference uh, so far. Let's see, who is here for the very first time? Who is the first time attendee? Get up, stand up, please. Stand up. Wow, that's a lot. That's a lot, great. Thank you very much for being here. All right, this is the third NEOS conference. Who has been here for all three conferences? Please get up. Wow, <laughs> that's not bad, great. A warm welcome for these people too. And now all the others can get up too because you're good people too. Everybody get up now, get on your feet. Thank you, get up, yeah, great. I have one more question or a couple of questions. So let's see where, yeah, keep standing, keep standing, keep standing. Let's see where we all come from. Who had less than 500 kilometers to get to this conference, sit down. Okay, who had more than, or less than, less than 1,000 kilometers to get here? Sit down. Interesting, interesting. Who had more than 2,000 kilometers? Less than, I say. Last man standing, right? Well, where are you from? Where? Australia, that's hard to beat, is it? <laughs> cool. Thanks for being here. Okay, let's get to it. What's new this year? We're going to have talks which are 30 minutes long, a little shorter than last year, so that we can pack even more high-end content into the day. We're going to have breaks between the sessions, which kind of makes sense if you want to go to the other stage. We have two stages. This is the center stage. We have the studio stage. <clears throat> and we'll have two tracks. Um, this year, you will not be able to ask questions during the talks. There will be no Q&A, which is kind of disappointing, isn't it? However, you are to go to the core team and speakers lounge in the lobby, in the lounge area, go there, ask them questions, talk to them, tell them how great they are, whatever. This is what you have to do. Please talk to them, you're invited, and they will be in the lounge area for you to talk to them. Um, we'll also, like last year, have a live stream of both stages, so you can invite each and every one to join um, <clears throat> remotely uh, with www.neoscon.io, which is sponsored by Sandstorm. Thank you very much, Sandstorm. Yeah. There is, a, there is an app for everything nowadays, isn't it? Uh, so there's a conference app too. And you should please download and install the app. There are QR codes lying all over the place. Just scan it and download the app. Because not only do you get all the information about the talks and the speakers in, the, in these apps, in the app, you can also rate the talks you have attended. And this is what you should do so that we know which was the greatest nicest talk of them all. Um, submitting ratings is quite simple. You see, one star is not so good. Five stars is really good. We'll also have lightning talks. A lightning talk is five minutes long. You can apply for lightning talks 
With this form, you're gonna, you're gonna find the forms on the tables. And please, if you wanna submit a lightning talk, just fill in the form. Go to the registration hall, and there is a pin board, pin wand, a pin board where you can put your talks. And everybody is invited to vote. So if you wanna listen, if you wanna hear one of those lightning talks, just put a bullet, uh, um, um, those little round thingies that stick, sticker, Sticker, help me out here, sticker, points, whatever. Put them on the talk you want to hear, and tomorrow will be the lightning talk sessions with the, se with the six lightning talks that have been selected. <clears throat> Most important, rather that than offline, we have a free Wi-Fi. It's NeosCon19. It's pretty straightforward, and the password is NeosCon19. You can also find that information on the tables if you don't remember it. Tonight... We're going to have an uh, um, award ceremony, so stay tuned for the uh, NEOS projects that get an award. And also, we have a social event, obviously. It starts at 8 o'clock. Um, they only have snacks there, so I would suggest that you just grab some dinner somewhere and then go to the social event starting uh, 8 o'clock. Don't forget to bring those blue ribbons you all have them in your, in your bag, conference bag, because this ribbon means free drinks, so don't forget it. Yeah, woo! <laughs> well, <laughs> let, me, let me add free drinks until the budget runs out. Let's see what happens. <laughs> okay, thank you very much to the sponsors who make this event possible. We have three gold sponsors, which is Network Team. Please applaud for the Network Team. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Our second gold sponsor is Punkt.de. Let's hear it for Punkt.de. <clears throat> and last not least, the third gold sponsor, Flow Native. Thank you very much, Flow Native. We also have a couple of more sponsors, silver sponsors, bronze sponsors, media partners. Thanks a lot to all of them making this great event happening. Applaud for them. Let's hear it for them. Thank you very much. And let's not forget to thank the organizers who put a lot of energy and effort and sweat and tears into this event, Zeitgeist and Sandstorm. Let's hear it. Thank you. Thanks a lot. So I would say this is it. Let's get started. Let's get it rolling. And I don't think that I have to say a lot about our first speaker. He's one of the founding fathers of Flow and Neos. I'm going to tell you one thing, though, you might not know about him. He's, he plays the ukulele. And I would love to see that on stage one day, Robert Lemke. But not today. Today we're just going to hear his keynote. Please welcome on stage Robert Lemke. Yes, that would be actually quite nice uh, in this location here, playing the ukulele. I play the ukulele, the bass ukulele, even better. Uh, even better. And with this bass setup, I guess that would be quite nice. Um, but I have to practice a bit for that. <laughs> well, I have the big privilege to welcome you uh, today. Uh, for this year again, um, as long as they let me do this, I, I glad you, gl gladly do that um, and give you a bit of an uh, idea of what happened throughout last year and what we're heading at. And just take that, I mean, I, I don't take that for granted that these events happen, that so many people come together, um, because uh, we always have to be aware that this is just an open source project. It's not like a company behind it who organizes everything. Um, and the, the nicest thing 
uh, or part for me about it is that it's always full of surprises because it's not centrally coordinated, not someone has a concept for marketing um, and everything needs to fit in. You come here and, and see everything the, for the first time, what um, everyone prepared, like this NEOS logo here, and it's always full of surprises. And that's uh, the beauty, really, of the project, that not only for events, but also for the development and other parts, um, you get a lot of inspiration. So I'm very thankful for that. And without further ado, um, I'll give you a little look back um, of the past year, as, as, as usual. Um, NEOS, the NEOS project actually started 14 years ago. Can you imagine that? Uh, when I uh, sat, sat together with Carsten for the first time and we uh, had the first ideas about uh, Flow Framework and, and then later NEOS. And the 1.0 was released five and a half years ago in, in Nuremberg. Yes, but a lot of things happened, and um, last time we met uh, in, in this bigger, um, uh, in, with this bigger event in Hamburg at the NEOS conference, as you've all already seen in the um, movies uh, or clips shown before. And well, that, that is of course, um, after that, a lot of people come and ask like, oh, that, that's quite nice, what, what plans do you have and uh, how can I contribute? And what we then suggest usually is, um, why not start with um, going to a meetup close to your place? And we have uh, quite a few meetups also not only in Germany, which I'm very happy about, and they are a pretty good place to start to find people in your area um, to connect and who can help you also with uh, making your first steps for contributions. And then, of course, we have our code sprints or sprints in general. It's not about code only. Um, we had quite a few, I think even twice in Dresden this time, in Luzern, uh, Salzburg and Hamburg. And these sprints are usually um, like happening for a week or so, where most of us, uh, most of the core team comes together and also new people who are interested in how everything works, like how does this um, core work work in, um, internally. And then we have some topics we're working on and help people getting started and, and or prepare for release, for example. And releases, uh, this year we had 72 NEOS releases and um, we had uh, 36 flow releases. And these releases also don't happen automatically, of course, although we have a lot of things automated. So I don't know who's, who's here, but uh, could please everyone who did upmerges or releases stand up, please. Yes. Very nice. This is a lot of work, and this is actually quite some work, which is, I mean, it's, it's not like uh, carrying out the garbage or something. It's a bit more fun, <laughs> but still, you need to, uh, <laughs> some people say so, yeah. Um, but still, uh, it's not as exciting as uh, creating a whole new feature which you then can present on a stage or something you know and so i have i'm i'm very thankful for for all this work and also it helps um communicating that that you can really rely on neos the releases we put a lot of effort into making them uh, high quality releases so you have really very few hassle, if any, to upgrade from one version to another. Um, and it happens very often that uh, someone does a release to um, or upgrade to a new version of NEOS, like a minor version, um, like by, by accident, like, oh, I did Composer update, and then I had the new NEOS version, and it works. Well, <laughs> I think I did an update. Um, <laughs> and I think that's quite nice, and, but it's also a lot of work um, behind the scenes. And what I'm also happy about is, uh, is that we have new team members coming in every year. 
Um, as you probably know, we are organized in uh, separate teams to keep the team sizes small. Um, so we have the Minions team, we have the Unicorn team, <laughs> and we have the Tiger team. And, um, and these are basically the home bases uh, socially for, for us. So it's not like all the work is happening in these teams, but uh, we try to meet uh, every week uh, in a video chat and then just ask each other if there was anything frustrating or motivating. Um, and do you have anything to show you want to show us? So it's a bit about connecting and not so much about um, working on things together. That is something which usually happens across the whole NEOS team. And this year we have, as new team members, um, if you like, I invite you to stand up if you're here, David Spiola, Roland Schütz, Markus Günther, Maya Bornstein and Fabian Tschög. Yes. And yeah, thank you so much. It's, and it happened uh, in this, these cases, it also happened like, um, uh, of course, you discuss in the NEOS team, should we invite them uh, as a new team member and so and And then people ask like, aren't they already team members? Like, <laughs> because it felt so natural already. And yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. So about the NEOS releases we had, um, in NEOS 4.1, uh, we had a very important um, change, and that was that we were able to upgrade to CK Editor 5. Uh, you know that uh, we're using CK Editor for inline editing, and in the previous version, uh, we tried to uh, adjust the user interface to our needs, but in reality, what we did was uh, that CK ed the original CK editor user interface was still there. It was just hidden, you know, um, and and we created ours on top. And CK editor five allows us to use a proper API for all of that, and that um, brings us some powerful features in the future, I guess. Um, we had also some some further additions um, in in the media management part about PDF handling and so on. And Christian is trying to propagate that we go into full PSR compliance at some point. Oh, standards, standards, you love that. And uh, that is also a lot of work to, to do that in a backwards compatible manner so that uh, we, we don't have lots of breaking changes. Um, we got quite far with this, this integration and um, I think with PSR 7, the HTTP standard, um, there will be probably one breaking, little breaking change in the next major version. <laughs> little? Should I say little? <laughs> okay. Uh, but that's what major uh, versions can be um, for. So, but that means you can use parts of NEOS um, also outside of NEOS in other um, PHP applications and of course we can integrate other PHP libraries more easily into NEOS. So that's a nice effort. Um, still standards don't always make sense. Uh, that's also a bit, I mean, it's we we won't implement all implementations for all of these standards because um, sometimes it's really hard to give up on what we have there already, because uh, sometimes we might even have some better concepts. Um, and then we had um, the NEOS 4.2 release uh, called Snowdrop. So we also introduced code names for our releases. And with that, we focused on uh, SEO support uh, improvements and some re resilience and also um, we uh, improved the uh, asset sources and media management support. Do you remember last year uh, when we had asset sources? So let's see if that works. By the way, I hoped I, I would give live demos here, but then I recognized, oh, I won't have a table. So I try to record everything. Um, asset sources means that within NEOS, you can just use, for example, Unsplash and then search for Dresden, and then you have um, a picture 
um, of the church here, or you use uh, the media wiki integration, uh, search uh, for something there, and then you can just use it in NEOS as if it would uh, be a local asset in your uh, NEOS media management. And that was really, really nice to see very shortly after we had that release to come uh, that new uh, integrations uh, were coming up, mostly by Daniel Lienert, who's taking a photo right now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you uh, very much for that. And I think that there's a lot uh, of potential there. So we um, also integrated some bigger asset management um, for NEOS and, and that's for editors and also for compliance and, and things like that. It's really um, a nice addition we had there. And then very recently we had the NEOS 4.3 LTS release called Gryphon. Um, and there, a lot of things happened also, again, in, in the React UI. Um, who's still using the old user interface? The I think it was called Ember.js, right? Yeah. Anyone still using it? No. That's very good. Because uh, with the next version, uh, it, will be <laughs> it will be gone, <laughs> finally. <laughs> um, and Dimitri took the major task of um, uh, rewriting big parts of the UI uh, with TypeScript because um, uh, they did an analysis during a sprint uh, where are most bugs in the UI coming from and it turned out that um, most of them were due to uh, uh, the, the missing type safety they had, like uh, something is undefined errors, you know. So that was um, one of the big reasons to rewrite everything again. <laughs> more or less, um, and this time with TypeScript. But in total, um, we had a lot of uh, good feedback uh, for the new UI, although it's not so new anymore. Um, then in the Atomic Fusion department, um, who's using Atomic Fusion in projects? Yes. And a year ago, that was a completely different thing. Um, people were starting with it, and this is a real big success. And uh, so we we are at that stage now where um, um, it was all about developer happiness, to uh, getting a few things smoother, like renaming uh, a few fusion objects so they fit better into Atomic Fusion. But with that, you can see um, the big features are already there. People are using it very successfully, and. We're basically um, trying to to clean that up a bit. So here's um, one one of the comments from from Dimitri about CK Editor Five um, that tells everything I I think um, because previously it was like yes it's a really nice editor but now it's also um, because of the API it's actually very very nice to work with it um, as a developer. Oh, and then something slipped into the last uh, NEOS release. Um, I don't know, who's aware of automatic asset variants? <laughs> yeah, because you know me. Uh, that was actually part of the last release, but it was um, hidden as a beta feature behind a feature flag. Um, and I want to show you what I intended to do with that. So you can imagine that we have um, assets of some kind in the media management. You upload uh, a photo, for example. And then an editor um, wants to modify this photo in a way, for example, chooses a different cropping area uh, for a different purpose. And when an editor does that, NEOS automatically creates an asset variant out of it. And that, that just happens in the background, and you're probably not aware of that these asset variants exist. Now, we had a use case where we thought um, in, a, in a project um, it would be nice if we would have predefined asset variants um, which we could use for responsive websites. So, for example, you have um, in different uh, views of your 
website, for mobile view, and so on, you have, uh, you're using different aspect ratios for your photos. And of course, the editor should just only upload once um, his photo, and it should be used in all these different aspect ratios. Um, and these variants should be created automatically then. Because then you can also define that things should be cropped or filtered and so on. So the idea was to create some um, configuration. It's probably a bit hard for you to read, but anyway, this is, this is just settings, which says, okay, um, I have these variant asset variant presets, and um, I have the first preset, uh, which consists of the following variants. Please create a variant with this aspect ratio, with this cropping filter, and you could use other filters as well, for example, a watermark or something like that. And every time someone imports or uploads an image, um, this, this preset will be active and create these um, asset variants automatically. So, uh, I recorded this here uh, half an hour ago <laughs> um, with the Wi-Fi, so it's partly a bit slow, it's using cloud storage. So, just imagine you upload uh, some asset here, and now it's uploading and uploading and uploading. Um, it's also, um, in the background, creating different asset variants. By the way, um, it works much faster when I do that at home. <laughs> okay, here we have it. Um, so I uploaded the picture, and uh, when, when you go to it, um, well, now it's rendering the thumbnail, you see there's a new tab up there called Variants. Um, and that also works for other kinds of variants, not only for pre-rendered uh, or automatic variants. Now, you see that these variants have been created and you could use them in your responsive layout, but do you see any problem with that? <laughs> yes, uh, so the person is missing on some, some of these versions. Um, now, Christian created a nice um, UI for that, which I didn't manage to, to get running last night because I was so, so busy uh, welcoming everyone and speaking <laughs> to everyone last night. So anyway, you can now, in the beta version, um, click on any of these and then just uh, change the cropping area very easily. But of course, it would be much nicer if you wouldn't have to do that manually. Um, so, I have a little uh, job queue here, which I start. And that job queue is called the Flow Native Smart Crop Auto Adjust job queue. Um, can you imagine what it does? <laughs> Well, it's um, analyzing the images, and now when you reload and wait for the Wi-Fi, you see that the person is perfectly in the area. Yes. <laughs> yes, um, that is implemented in Visual Basic. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's so I uploaded another image just to, to show that here you see that the, uh, the, the head is a bit on top of the image and it takes a while here. Now you see the job is running through. I can go to the variance again. Mm. Cloud storage is a nice thing. And you see that it shows... Um, the best area it could choose, at least. Um, yeah, so that, that was my intention for the asset variant generation, and it's a beta version because um, there are a few things to, to get clean in the UI, and also um, I need to uh, get that smart cropping package clean. 
When you want to use that at some point, uh, you probably need Docker because uh, the um, image detection library I'm using there is Python based and so on, and you don't really want to install all that stuff. But I put it into some nice Docker images, and, and then, then it's no problem. It doesn't make any dirt. <laughs> right. We had another topic um, throughout the year, um, which started quite some time ago. And actually, um, we found some, uh, or Carsten, I think you found, or at least you told me, some very, very old drawings and ideas about something uh, which eventually becomes now the event sourced content repository. Um, we have most of these ideas uh, kind of virtually forever. We wanted, always wanted to have something like versioning and history and undo and uh, also other things like, for example, when you translate parts of the website that you can better coordinate like uh, what changed um, in the meantime after I translated this part um, so, so you can catch up with the translation and things like that. And these are some of the reasons why we started um, creating a whole new content repository. Um, I always say we, but of course it's not like we, every one of us, it's always specific people. Um, and yeah, and in, in this case, uh, very, very active uh, was Sebastian Kurfürst and Bernhard. Um, and I think Bastian also in the event sourcing department. So a lot of progress has been made. So last year, when we talked about it at the conference, it was basically a proof of concept a hack, yeah, just to see if, if it's leading anywhere. But nobody could tell what were the jobs or, or the tasks we need to do in order to get that actually finished. Um, and now, we have something running which can do quite some impressive things already, um, but it's not done. However, we know the, the unknown unknowns, they disappeared more or less, and we have a rather clear roadmap of what needs to be done. Sebastian will talk about that uh, tomorrow in the last talk and give you a big picture, not too technical this time, but more like um, how this will develop. And it's also clear that uh, we will need some, some kind of fundraising for that in order to make it happen in, in a reasonable time. But this time we really know, like back then with a, a new um, React UI, what needs to be done. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. And as far as I know, there is nothing like, like that in any CMS. N not even any enterprise CMS. I haven't seen any anything event sourced that, uh, which might mean that we are completely wrong with that. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Um, yes. Well, let's go into um, into the direction of new people using Neos and so on. And one of the bottlenecks was always documentation. We always said like, yeah, we are aware of documentation. It's not so easy for beginners. And a lot of things happened um, during this um, year. Roland Schütz uh, took a lead and, and Maya helped um, and created a new website. And so we have docs.neos.io. This is something which happened since the last conference. Uh, with a lot of new documentation, and we have lots of videos there um, giving you a first impression of how to, to work with NEOS. And I'd like to invite everyone uh, who has a bit of knowledge in certain areas to consider contributing to that website. And it's, it's basically a NEOS website, or create a video, or create um, like just a draft and then someone from the team will uh, look through it and, and polish it. But please do contribute to that because it's uh, what, what makes it so much easier for everyone to start but also to, uh, to work on a daily basis. And another big achievement is that for the first time we now have 
uh, formulated the best practices because, of course, you can use a system like NEOS in so many different ways. You can use fusion in this way, you can use fluid or atomic fusion in this, and you can create your project in that manner. You can so many things. And uh, so we have a one zero of our NEOS best practices, which you find on, on the website. And I really suggest that you go through that and, and follow these suggestions uh, because it makes your projects um, a much higher quality and, and it's also easier to talk with others and exchange ideas then. Right, and then uh, we have some headache problems uh, or topics here. You remember the NEOS Foundation? Um, what did you hear about the NEOS Foundation during the last year? Not, <laughs> not so much, I guess. Um, except for probably my colleagues. <laughs> um, well, it turned out that the setup which we chose, um, I mean, the specific uh, form of a company uh, which is socially, uh, a social company and so on, and then due to the special status in the UK was a big hassle for us. So just things like we thought which were very easy, like opening a bank account turned to, into a major nightmare. Um, and it will be worse when bre Brexit happens. Uh, it, because, I mean, we who are maintaining this organization live in the EU and um, the company is in, in the UK and it's, yeah, it's a big hassle. Therefore, our plan is to relocate the NEOS Foundation uh, to safe harbors again. <laughs> um, probably, um, I mean, we haven't decided that yet, but we're investigating what we can do, but probably it will be uh, a German association, um, because that makes it for us much easier to to maintain that. It's it's a bit of a pity because it was a nice idea, but well, it was not maintainable that way. Still, um, who already has a badge, a recurring badge, and sponsorship? That's not too many. This is the most efficient way how you can help the existing team. Like, I hear very often, like, yeah, I really would like to contribute, but in our company we cannot do that because we have so much to do, we need to earn so much money. This is a great opportunity to get rid of that money again and let other do, uh, others do the work. So what we use the money mostly for is um, paying for travel expenses and so on. Um, we don't really use it for development. Um, there we ha usually have our crowdfunding uh, projects like for the React UI. But please consider that also, it's for us, it's much better than a one-time donation uh, because it makes things much more planable. We can have a little budget and even if you decide to go for something like 50 euros or so, um, if your company cannot afford 50 euros a month, then I would consider uh, looking at your business model again. Right. So we have such a nice logo, uh, the NEOS logo. Yeah, there's just uh, this one thing. <laughs> um, I mean, we're, as you know, we're a bit idealistic and we thought like yeah we can go without a trademark because the friend uh, the the world is a friendly place nobody will harm us except when they try to do so and so in kind of a little emergency uh, action we had to register the trademark um, because uh, someone wanted us to change our logo <laughs> Um, and which was not fair. So um, we now registered the trademark uh, for this logo in the EU. And the problem with that is, as I uh, explained earlier, oops, 
that uh, the NEOS Foundation is in the UK and when Brexit comes, it could lose the trademark again and so we didn't want to go there. Um, that is why uh, the NEOS team decided that uh, one of the companies, and uh, by coincidence, it's my company, um, <laughs> Flonative registered the trademark and takes care of um, all the lawyers' hassle at the moment, so I'm uh, writing back and forth with lawyers uh, like on a weekly basis since winter last year. Um, the problem is that it's still under dispute and so on. And, but we'll finally win it, I, I promise. So we're quite far with that. And then there's just the word NEOS, which is much more difficult to get. Um, actually, there are quite a few trademarks in Japan and, and not used. There's actually an airline, or not anymore, but the trademark still exists. Um, and then there are worldwide um, or for specific countries um, registered trademarks for NEOS uh, for the US, for example. And as it turns out, uh, I know these guys who own that trademark. And before you imagine anything like, yeah, they tried to steal our uh, brand. No, it was back then when we were still part of the Type 3 community. Uh, the Type 3 Association registered the trademark as soon as we knew that we use, uh, will use NEOS as a trademark. But that means they have the trademark. Um, and yesterday night, I got this official um, statement from Rick. Um, we are already in the process of preparing the transfer to the NEOS project, but he not, um, again uh, told us, yes, we'll do that, and we hope you're um, having a good time with your trademark. So I, I thank, <laughs> thanks a lot. That's, that's a very nice move, I think. Right, so now that we have such a nice logo, shouldn't we do more marketing? Um, and uh, Fabian, one of our new team members, uh, did that and called uh, virtually any <laughs> web agency using NEOS. Who has been called by Fabian? That would be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that means it's very efficient because he tried to reach those who don't come to the NEOS conference. Um, but that was really nice. He tried to find out um, how are you doing with NEOS, uh, what's missing, what is your biggest problem in, uh, in, in projects and so on. And uh, you might have guessed it, but one of the things is uh, not like uh, NEOS is bad or they are not impressed or something, but the uh, first question is, why didn't I hear about NEOS if it's so great? Yeah. And that is something we, we still need to work on. And uh, Sebastian uh, suggested that we um, concentrate the next half year really on, on, on the marketing side and um, uh, on, on the product side, communication side for NEOS. Um, we also have become a member of the CMS Garden. I don't know if you uh, know the CMS Garden. Um, they um, go to different events and then have a nice booth together and um, um, explain open source content management systems and then you have gardeners from each open source project there answering questions. So we can go to quite a few events if we have the people to, who, who could go there. So just if, if you feel like you can tell something about NEOS and you can um, answer questions and so, why not volunteer for that? That would be very helpful. So, yeah. And also, with the concentration of uh, marketing for the next half year, we'll have um, video recordings here during the event, um, like doing something like interviews, asking for statements and so on. We'll uh, record quite a few um, uh, quite a few, so we can use them throughout the year and publish them and um, 
communicate a bit about NEOS. Also, if you would like to organize a meetup um, in, in your city, then just get in touch with anyone who already organized one or with the NEOS team and we'll gladly help, with the, help you with that. And also, of course, um, we'll, we'll come to that meetup and have some talk about whatever topic you choose. <laughs> yes. At this point, I have my purpose slide. Um, and that was a bit difficult. Uh, so, it's about um, remembering why we do that and hoping that you also sometimes think about why are you actually doing that. So, if you're running a company for some years, you're so much into this loop of getting new customers and getting these projects, working on projects and so on. But do you really, really, really know why are you doing that and what for? What is, what is your vision for that? Did you ask the five whys? Um, and the, one of the problems is, of course, that your awareness is sometimes not on topics which are the most important ones. Like, I don't know if you read about this. Um, th there was a boy born, and uh, in every newspaper it was on the front page, it's a boy. Um, and at the same time, uh, at the same day, actually, there was a study published that the Earth will go to end and we have a big problem with biodiversity. Uh, that didn't make it to the front page uh, yet, but maybe some other week. <laughs> so, uh, why am, am I telling you about that? So, these... these uh, topics are so broad that it's so difficult, they are too complex to, to say like, yeah, so great, but what can I do about it? I cannot change the world or I cannot rescue the world. Um, but it's actually about the small things every time and not only about things like uh, the climate change or something like that, but also um, I mean, when I, when I see you guys tweeting about data privacy and things like that, with that, you don't change anything, yeah? It's, it's not enough to uh, once a month sign some petition and then just go to your day-to-day -day work and just continue as always. Because I would imagine that every one of us was at some point in a project involved in a meeting about tracking, you know? adding tracking to a website and so on. Um, how often do you actually question everything you're doing there? I mean, everything Facebook does is done by developers. They have a responsibility. These, uh, I mean, they can change something. They can propose something in a meeting. So what I do, for example, is when we talk about tracking in, uh, in a customer project, I ask them, what do you actually need that for? Do you need all the data you want to collect here? Or do you just do that for just in case, you know? Or is there a more creative solution to that? Um, with that, I only want to remind you that there are so many opportunities every day where you can change the world um, to something better bit by bit and don't fall into the trap of doing things just because everyone is doing that. Because our industry is using artificial intelligence for everything doesn't mean that it makes sense all the time, you know. Just question it. <laughs> Right, and this is, by the way, the reason why I am still part of the NEOS project, because it is not this software um, which 
I mean, I don't know like every corner of Neos anymore. It's it's not the software why I'm still here. It is um, the culture and the community uh, which makes this project. Uh, because otherwise, imagine you would do that for 15 years or 20 years and then always uh, work with the same software. It can become quite boring. But not if you see um, that it inspires you in, in many areas and also in, in your private life. So with that, I hope that you have a very inspiring NEOS conference. Um, it used to, to be, uh, have, have the name Inspiring Conference for a reason. And I hope to see you around and talk with you and wish you much inspiration from all the great speakers uh, we have here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Robert.